Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Raid Fun, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. In the last episode, we got here to the Fenex City Coliseum and encountered these four people, as well as a couple of Cypher Peons blocking the entrance. And in this episode, without any further delay, let's go ahead and enter the fray. Forget it, you can't have our videotapes! You can't do this to the press! For a prisoner, you're rather hard-nosed, I must say. But it just wouldn't do to have those tapes broadcast to the public. I have been promised the position of Orr's governor by none other than Master Grievel. So, you must understand, it wouldn't do to have it be known that I muzzled the citizens of Fenac. If that got out, imagine what harm it would bring to my pristine political record. Now, hand over the videotapes, please. I don't care about your sick aspirations! Don't you dare underestimate the power of the free press! ONBS stakes its very existence on delivering the truth for justice! I WILL GET THIS NEWS OUT! It's so sad that you won't listen to reason. Very well, I suppose you leave me with no option. Oh, you! Are you the dastardly child who won't stop fooling in our affairs? Eggrog! What kind of name is that? What were you doing? Get rid of this pest! Sir, yes sir! Mr. Snattle, sir! Aye aye, sir! What is he, a sailor? Hey, boy! Playtime is over! Yeah, sure. Whatever. Anyways, as you can see right there, we have now been introduced to our first battle against, well, Eggrog. And I have to say right now, um, the different types of outfits that the different Cypher Peons wear does, in fact, vary depending on the rank. It does say he's a Cypher Peon, however, that does not necessarily mean that he is exactly the same rank as all the Peons we've seen throughout Fennec City so far, such as... Oh, I don't know, other people like Fault League or whatever the hell the other names were. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and begin this battle. Graveler and a Hoot Hoot. I'm gonna use Return on Hoot Hoot and Water Gun on Graveler. Let's see how this works. Alright, and that should one-shot it if I'm not mistaken. And yes, it did. Alright, perfect. Good job, Vapor Varporeon. What am I trying to say here? Varporeon. Anyways, Vaporeon grew to level 29. So very good that I did that. And let's see. Teddy Ursa, you're close to level 30. Wow, you're actually going to reach level 30 by the end of today's episode. And a- Hey! Eggrog! You got a gulp in too! I can agree with that. And Facade, alright. I want to explain Facade, because it is an interesting move that can be used rather strategically. Facade is a move that, when it has- uh, Okay, let me explain that better. I was going to say something really weird. When the Pokemon that is using it is either poisoned, burned- Or actually, no, just poisoned or burned, or- it, uh, I can't necessarily remember the third one, but there were three. Um, correct myself if I'm wrong on that one. But anyways, let me go ahead and get back to that after I introduce the Shadow Seal and- oh, I might say, it looks so adorable. Just look at it, it has a little tongue out, it's so cute. Uh, anyways, let me stop fanboying and stop obsessing over Seal, even though I'm not really obsessing over it at all, I'm just kind of pointing out it looks adorable. And let's go ahead and use Fury Slimes again. So anyways, for side, the power of the move will double if the user is either burned, poisoned, or... I can't remember the third one, if there even is a third one, so I'll put it on screen if I'm correct or wrong on that. So, anyways, let's- Oh, Seal. I'm telling you, Seal is such an adorable Pokemon. I mean, hell, there's a lot of- Wow, critical hit. That did so much damage, Seal. And- Oh, what do you mean I missed? Come on! And Shockwave- Oh, that is gonna be a little bit worse. Oh, sure. Go ahead and attack the Pokemon that isn't weak to that move. Ugh, okay, anyways. Um... I'm gonna go and use another water gun and another fury swipes. I wanna see if this works because I really want this battle to be done and over with. Because quite obviously, we have another one. And are you serious? Just look at how little HP that Gulpin has left. I am positive it has two or one left. Come on and wow, super effective for nine damage. Yeah, Shadow Wave isn't the best move in the entire world. It has a very low base power, and it just is all around a bad move. And yeah, three times that reason, like, come on, it looks like it fainted! If anything, it looks like the HP, like the letters on the HP, the colors on the HP are just kind of like oozing outside and into the bar. Come on! Ugh, anyways. You know what? I'm gonna go and use Teddy Ursa's turn to use a Great Ball on this, because I want to get this over and done with because of reasons. So... Let's see how this works, and plus, Seal would look rather nice at a Great Ball. I, it does fit, honestly, with the whole scheme of it being kind of white. And, you know, it is an ice water type, so it would match. So let's see how this works. Come on, one, two, 
three, boom, seal is caught. I'm telling you guys, great balls are the future. All you need is Moo Moo Milk and a great ball, and you'll be set for life. And yeah, there we go. Now you fainted. God, it pulls out like, I'm pretty sure it was like one or two HP. I mean, come on. You guys saw it too. Pathetic. I hate when that happens. And we just get defeated Eggrog, who kind of sounds like Eggnog, but a really, really weird poisoned version of it. Oh, no. And that's really up to say, well, at least he pays us the same amount of money as the other Cyber Peons did earlier last episode. And he's just kind of like shaking his fist to the camera back there. That was stunning. That footage should be electrifying. Cameron! Get it? Cameron? Cameron? Because he's the cameraman? Oh. Did you get that on tape? Uh, so sorry, but you can't expect me to keep filming under these conditions. Oh, for this is precisely the time your camera should be rolling. Show some journalistic guts. Cut, cut. If Master Grio were to see this, he'd be most displeased. I have no mercy for anyone in my way, even for a child like you. You answer to me now. And with that, our second battle versus a Cypher Admin has begun. This time versus Cypher Admin Snaddle. He's going to be starting out with a Lancer in level 26 with the moves Facade, Shockwave, Flail, and Water Gun. And a Quagsire level 26 with the moves Rock Tomb, Ice Punch, Water Gun, and Slam. Originally, I was planning to use a different Pokemon for this beginning set because I wanted to just show Vaporeon to the air so get a little bit more screen time. However, this would work out. So... I'm going to use Vaporeon soon to go ahead and heal Teddy Ursa because honestly at this time Vaporeon is not that much of a useful Pokemon against two water type Pokemon. So let's go ahead and heal Teddy Ursa right there and I'm going to start out with using, I want to use Return on Lantern because Quagsire I'm not so worried about that as Lantern because Lantern is an electric water type, I know, kind of a weird typing. And Shockwave, yeah that's what I'm worried about because if that hits Vaporeon I'm pretty sure it's going to do some damage. So let's see and... Eh, it didn't do as much as I was expecting, but still, a couple more of those hits and Vaporeon would be down for the count, and we wouldn't, and we will need Vaporeon later. You'll see why. So yeah, half damage on Lantern, that's a very good way to start out this battle. And Rock Tomb, alright, Rock Tomb is a rock type move that can lower speed, and I'm, whether or not I just have a really bad luck or not. And on oh, Quackstar looks so cute and so defenseless when he was trying to defend, and yes, defenseless when you're trying to defend, because that makes sense. Anyways, Lantern goes down for the count, so that marks the first fainting of Snaddle's Pokemon. And with that, the, yeah, I almost said Vaporeon. Teddy Ursa goes to level 30, so that's very, very good on his part. However, he does not learn any moves. Anyways, right over here, this is his signature Pokemon, a Lunatone. And I'll explain that in just a minute, after we realize it is, in fact, a Shadow Lunatone. Level 25 plus with the moves Shadow Sky and Shadow Wave. Now, we have seen... We have seen... We have seen Shadow Wave before in the past, as we've seen the whole 9 damage and blah, 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 against... With Seal using it on Vaporeon and Teddy Ursa. However, this time around, I would like to go ahead and show off exactly what Shadow Sky is, because we have not seen that yet. So, I'm going to go ahead and use Bite on Lunatone. Lunatone is a rock psychic, so Vaporeon is a perfect Pokemon to have for this. However, I'm afraid that I might accidentally KO Lunatone in that case. I won't be so worried, but I'd rather catch it right now, because we do have Roselia on Q for Mirror B, so I don't want to have two Pokemon at once on there. So... For our next move, I want to use Return on Quagsire. Let's see how this works out. And yes, I was wondering who was going to use it on his first turn. Shadow Sky is a move that, once deployed onto the field, it will last for five turns and has the same effect as Hail. If you, if you do not know what Hail is, Hail will basically rain down and it will deal around 6% of your Pokemon's total HP. And it is a rather deadly move. Personally, for Shadow Sky, in its case, the only Pokemon that cannot be hurt by it are Shadow Pokemon themselves, which I find very cool. And if I could keep Lunatone alive for just a little bit longer, I would like to go ahead and show off something even cooler. So, I'm actually not necessarily going to make Lunatone faint just yet. So, let's go ahead and see how this works out. I'm going to have to heal Vaporeon this turn because I did not want Vaporeon to faint. And yeah, as you can see right there, I probably don't even have to worry about using any moves on Quagsire because I'm pretty sure Shadow Sky will take care of itself. So, I'm going to go ahead and use Lemonade on our Vaporeon. It won't necessarily heal up to full, but hell... It's worth it, in my opinion, and right now, hmm, uh, I don't really necessarily want to attack Quagsire, because, well, Shadow Sky is going to take care of that on its own. Well, actually, no, 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 I have a plan. I'm going to use Fury Swipes, or no, no, Return on Quagsire, because if this works, I'd like to see in Shadow Wave, oh no, dangerous move incoming, how much damage? Oh no, 18 damage on Vaporeon. Oh no, third, okay, that was actually kind of a bit more than I expected. And Return takes down Quagsire just like that. 
No. Quagsire is so cute. A lot of Pokemon are really cute. And some are not. Anyways, yes, I was hoping to send that Pokemon next. Next up is a female cast form, level 27, with the moves Weather Ball, Water Pulse, Shockwave, and Icy Wind. And right here, the Flashing Light will strike cast form, but if the effect can turn on, I would like to explain cast form's ability, which is Forecast. Now, Forecast will allow it to change in change that Pokemon into any t into the corresponding weather conditions. So we're gonna see that in just a second. As I was trying to say, cast form does not necessarily change at all because of Shadow Sky, although it was something else like Hail, Sunny Day, or Rain Dance, it would change accordingly, but he does have, or she has a specific move that will be altered by Shadow Sky, and you'll see that in just a second. So, I'm gonna use his turn to capture Lunatone because right now I feel like it's time. It's at half health, and a Great Ball should be the one to take care of it. And I'm gonna use Return on Cast Form. Now let's see if Cast Form can use the Weather Ball after he try and catch his Lunatone. So let's see how this works! Alright, let's go and see what we can do. Come on. One, two, three. Ah, oh, so close. I was really hoping we'd get two perfect snags in a row. Ugh, anyways. Oh, God, okay. Um, is this gonna do what I think it's gonna do? Yeah, that's not that much, but yeah, that's what I was worried about. Teddy Ursa goes down, unfortunately, but you know what? That isn't necessarily so bad. Because right now, I would like to give the screen time right now to Swalla. Swalla, I was actually deciding right there. I was deciding whether or not I should go ahead and use Aeron, because Aeron does need a little bit more training so he can finally evolve it. But, in this, okay, right here, Weather Ball. Now, as you can see, once Weather Ball goes up and it goes down, you can see that it has now turned purple. Weather Ball only has its effect whenever Shadow Sky is in play. And, for some reason, it only attacked um, Swalot rather than just attacking Vaporeon. I don't understand why it wouldn't attack Vaporeon. Vaporeon is clearly the weaker one here, but whatever. So, anyways, as I was saying, Shadow Sky does alter the effect, or that, rather the attacked Weather Ball. I cannot even speak with this. God, what am I trying to say here? Weather Ball only gets affected by Shadow Sky, and it will turn it into a Shadow Move, which is rather deadly, and is a really strategic thing for Snaddle's team. And speaking about Snaddle's team, I want to go ahead and talk about that real quick. Snaddle's team, um, as we will see later on, because yes, we will see Snaddle later on. Oh my god, I'm sorry for the spoiler. But Snaddle does have a whole astrology themed team. I'm not going to just reveal the other Shadow Pokemon he does have later on, but I would just like to say that he does have an astral and astrologic theme to his team. And with Cast Form knowing Weather Ball and all that, it really does help with also the meteorology that it can help. Anyways, talking about something else rather than meteorology and all that stuff, he's there. His final Pokemon is a Metang, level 28 with the moves Thunder Punch, Metal Claw, and Confusion. And I do want to go over something real quick. I would like to go over types in general. I know it sounds a little bit weird and off topic, but... Someone wanted me to talk about the whole special physical thing about Pokemon prior to Generation 4 when the physical special split was put into effect. So, um, a lot of moves in the generation prior to Generation 4 were listed as physical because of its type and special because of its type. Uh, despite Thunder Punch, I should have mentioned this last episode as well. This is actually why someone talked to me about it. Last episode, um, if you remember, Kadabra used a or rather, Kadabra used Thunder Punch against our Vaporeon. And the thing is, while that would appear to be a physical move, it actually is not a physical move yet. It does turn into a physical move in Gen 4, but for now, it is a special move because Electric is considered to be, well, a special type. Um, the ones I will put, I'll put on screen right now all the different types that could be if you're looking at this as a walkthrough, and I'm apologizing for not really being the best in it, being a little bit sporadic with my whole, um, knowledge giving my whole teaching you guys on this but understand gen 3 wasn't necessarily my forte on this and I'm trying my hardest even though I did do research in the past so let's see how confusion works confusion that is what I was worried about and wow swat god I love this Pokemon to death so much it's so good all right but that should do something yeah it really need a whole lot dark type does get a resistance against steel or steel gets a resistance against dark type however it sent it a steel psychic it only did times one Alright, so now that Shadow Sky has subsided, I'm going to use Bite on Cast Swarm, and I'm going to take this turn to heal Swalot, because I actually... Hmm, do I want to heal? Yeah, yeah, I want to heal him. What am I talking about? Oh, sheesh, should I let Swalot die, or should I not let him die? I kind of want someone else to get screen time. No, let's just go ahead and be nice and heal Swalot. And Weather Ball, yeah, that will now just be a regular normal type move, because Shadow Sky is no longer in effect. And 
Despite it being a critical hit, it still did only 26 damage. Thank you, Base Swalot. And yeah, Thunder Punch right here. This is a special move, and it's gonna hit me for it not so hard, because it's not necessarily a Thunder type. Or an Electro type, my bad, not a Thunder type. What am I saying? And, okay, seriously? It has a 10% chance to paralyze! How the hell does a Porygon keep getting paralyzed by Thunder Punch only? I mean, come on! Ugh, let's just get this over with. Alright, now I want to use Shockwave on Metang because Poison does not work on Steel. So let's see how this works! Shockwave, um, I hope it does a little bit more than I'm expecting. No, I actually did as much as I was expecting. Alright, now we have to rely on Water Gun and finish the job. That is if... Oh god. That is if one Vaporeon does not die to Thunder Punch and- Oh god, okay! Now Vaporeon, you're paralyzed! Don't- Yes! Sweet! Come on, take it down, take it down, take it down! Oh, close enough! But that does not matter because right now we are going to use Water Gun once again and Shockwave once again. And since Swalla is surprisingly the fastest here, Shockwave shall finish the job. I love how its eyes just turn into like spirals like you see in any kind of generic anime thing. and It's funny. But anyways, with that all being done and said, we have to feed the Cypher Admin Snaddle. I might say his body is hella unproportioned. Duh! No! And I love how he just like does a fancy turn, just like shields his face. It's perfect. And look at that money! 2,800. Exactly the amount you'd expect from someone who wants to be the governor of Or. How is this possible? I've never seen a child so strong. But no matter, surely I've bought Gorgon enough time. His pressure recovery operation must be finished by now. Today we will leave quietly. But don't you forget us! <laughs> I love how he runs, just runs like a little tiny kid. Thank you, you kept them from taking our videotapes. We've got some explosive footage. My name is Marcia. We're, we were gathering news in Fennec when Cypher caught us and brought us here. But there's a silver lining in this. We managed to capture your heroics on tape. We did, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, you bet I did. I got everything on tape this time. Okay, we need to rush back to Pyra and get this news out on the air as soon as possible. Let's meet again! Thank you for everything! Marcia, wait for me! Sound familiar? These were once again the same two people that we saw when we first entered Pyrite. However, there's an item on the floor here. So, let's say we go ahead and pick it up. And this item, and... Makuhira, come on! I'm about to finish the episode and you just wanted to be purified. Listen, I will help you another time. I must finish this. Right over here, we get the elevator key, so now we can go to the pre-gym and free all the citizens and the mayor and Justy himself from Cypher's cruel basement planning. But right over here, this is an item that a lot of people always seem to forget because no one really wants to travel around this whole Coliseum, am I might say right now. Um, actually, I'll go exploring around the Coliseum in a little bit after we obtain this. Now, this contains one water stone. Um, fun fact, actually, last episode when I was getting the ice beam move, for a second, I was a little bit confused on whether or not it was actually here or if it was over there. However, I did know the Water Stone and Ice Beam were here, I just couldn't remember exactly if they were on the right or left or left or right. But anyways, before we go back, I want to go ahead and show off just how beautiful this place looks. I mean, yeah, the music doesn't necessarily fit with the whole Coliseum thing, like, just look at it. The whole gateway back there, all the banners, the water coming down. This is a perfect example of architecture, and hey, wait, hold on a second, I completely forgot about this third one, this one needs a PowerPoint up or a PP up, yeah, sure, all of you who are seven or something can laugh at that name, but I completely forgot about that, so, good thing I went exploring. You see, guys, if you explore in RPGs, you will always find things, that is a guaranteed fact, and that's what I love about the designs of RPGs in general. So, let's say we go ahead and head to the pre-gym at long last, and deliver the elevator key to the elevator itself, and free all the civilians, as well as the Mayor and Justy. Alright, now back to the pre-gym, you might wonder where the elevator is. You can't really see an elevator anywhere. So, you know where it is? Well, for all of you who've played Pokemon Coliseum, this game actually kind of expects you to figure it out on your own, however you do not know. Well, it's this huge freaking Pokeball right here. It appears to be an elevator, but it is not responding. So, you may be thinking, what do we have to do now? Well, that's where you need to go over to the control center right over here, because the elevator key obviously was taken away from this. So, we have to use it right over here, and with that, the elevator is ready to be activated. And it just pops up, and yes, that's the freaking plot twist. So yeah, it's a little bit of a cryptic idea on what to do, but then again, it also is a little bit logical. So, it all depends on whether or not your intelligence is high or less than a donkey. 
Anyways, now that we have gotten the elevator key, or rather the elevator itself to work, let's go down and see something rather beautiful. The scenery, the... Okay, I, I want to explain this place in detail, but as soon as we exit from here... I'm Fennec Mare Trest. H who are you? How did you get here? Oh my! So you, Sebastian, sent that scoundrel Snaddle packing? That is quite amazing! Does that mean we can finally leave this miserable place? Everyone, I need your attention, please! Let us all thank Sebastian heartily, then get out of here! Sebastian, I thank you sincerely. And I love how I, he asked everybody to thank us, but no one does except himself. I see, so we were close to having Cypher replace all our silly... All our cillians. All our citizens with their members. Oh, what a heinous plot! But it was stopped, and we owe it all to you, Sebastian. On behalf of the whole city, I sincerely thank you. In fact, I can't thank you enough right now. If you could, please visit me in my home later. Trust me, you've already been there. And dude, might I say... You have the robe of a criminal on your bed! But now, we finally meet the real Jesse! Sebastian, right? Your actions saved the city. We all owe you a big thanks! I'd like to keep in touch. May I get your PDA number? I'll give you a call if anything comes up. And we got the, the op and with that we get the awesome Justy's PDA number. Thank you. I'll be in touch. I've been thinking. I think Fenag was targeted because Cypher wanted to squash rumors that were spreading in town. People in the city have seen shady characters coming and going in the desert. People were talking about it. According to what the people say, there's something in the desert around here. You should ask around for details from the people in the city. Alright, so now that we have gotten our next objective, which does seem a little bit rather... Eh, what's the word I'm looking for? Rather obscure. We now have our new objective to go and see that place that people have seen shady characters coming and going to. So, I say we end things off here, because this is a bit of a long episode. I believe after I've done editing, all the small cuts I have to do, and other things, it would be around 20 plus minutes. So, I'm going to end it off here. So next time on Let's Play Pokemon XD, Gale of Darkness, we are going to go and see exactly what this place is. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.